Hey guys, you're watching Dansky, and in this tutorial, you're going to learn how to do some game menu animation in Adobe After Effects. Rightio, so we're now in After Effects, and I'm going to need to import some assets. So I'm going to double click the project panel and you can see I have lots of lovely assets here from this video sponsor Envato Elements. And here we are. So from the drop down you can see they have a huge library of video, music, sound effects, graphics, photos, fonts, add-ons, templates and even 3D assets. Quite honestly, it's absolutely nuts. So here's a few assets I've downloaded for this tutorial. We have a photo of an Icelandic cave, a wisp-like spirit animation, another piece of video titled Blue Energy, some smoke, and a delicious pack of frost effects. There's also a couple of fonts, Gatsby and Frank. And lastly, there's a couple of sound effects and a music track. And these are just a few of the millions of assets that come with unlimited downloads and a commercial license, all for just $16.50 a month with an annual subscription. Check out the link below. So I've downloaded and organized these in advance and I can select all of these and then click open. So first of all, I'm going to drag my Frostborn PSD graphic to the layers. This will generate a new composition and then I can edit those settings. Let's change this to 3840 by 2160, basically 4K and set the duration to 30 seconds. I can then double click assets in the project panel and press spacebar to preview them. So let's just check out a few of these other effects. So I'm going to start with the blue wisp-like energy. Let's drag this into the composition, select Frostborn and press S. I can now adjust the scale of this so it fills the scene and then press P to adjust the position. Next, let's select the wispy orb. And if you don't see the blending modes drop down, you can click this icon in the bottom left corner to expand this out. And let's change the blending mode to screen. We can now hit spacebar to play this and you can see it blends all the dark areas into the background. And I can now scale this up from the corner and remember to hold shift so it scales proportionally. Let's go and position this over her hand and then select the rotate tool and use this to rotate this around. And I'm going to keep rotating and playing just so this energy looks like it fits the shape of her hand and her overall posture. Okay, next let's select it from the layers panel and press command or control D to duplicate. And I'm going to move this over to the other hand, resize it slightly and repeat the same steps. And if you do move the background like that, you can also select this layer and press R for rotation if you find that a bit easier. Next, I'm going to select both layers and then press T. That's the shortcut for opacity. And I'm going to bring this down ever so slightly, somewhere around 85%. So let's give this a play and see how it looks. Now one downside is they are both the same, so I'm actually going to select one of them and distort it out of shape, rotate it a bit more and just try and make them both feel a little bit different from each other. There we go, that's a bit better. Next it's time for blue energy. So let's drag this into the composition. And then first of all, we'll change the blending mode to screen. Again, this blends it into the background. Let's make it bigger and then give this a play. Looks very cool, but I don't want the whole thing. So I'm going to select the pen tool and draw a path around part of this video. And this will mask out this specific section. There we go, mask successful. Now I can go down to the Twizzly icon here, expand this down with masks, mask one, and then feather that mask a little bit. This will soften the edges and help blend it into the background. Now I'm going to take a minute to rotate this up vertically and position these blue energy effects over my character's body just so it looks like she's radiating this blue energy. Again, I'm going to bring the opacity down on this one and make it very subtle. So let's give this a play and see it in action. Okay, next let's add some fog. So we'll drag this in and position it at the top. Now there's nothing here because my playhead is too far forward. So let's grab that and bring that back to the beginning. And you can see the fog in action. As you might have guessed, we're going to change the blend mode. We'll go with add. 
And from the effects and presets panel, I'm going to type in hue and then drag hue and saturation onto that layer. I can then edit this effect from the effect controls panel and I'm actually going to reposition this here. Just makes it a bit easier to access. So first let's check colorize. We can now adjust the hue for the fog so we can make this a little bit more bluish and we can also adjust the saturation and the lightness as well. You can also disable or enable the effect by clicking the effects icon at the top. And there we go, we can see our blue fog in action. Now this is starting to get demanding on my computer, so I'm going to change the preview to quarter, and this will help me get slightly smoother playback at the cost of resolution. Okay, now I've got some particles, so I'm going to drag these in as well. And you can see the playback is starting to struggle somewhat. Let's change the blending mode to color dodge, and we can now see it blends in with everything else. And again, I'm going to drop the opacity so they're a little bit less pronounced. And as you can see, playing back all of these high quality effects, well, my computer is dying. If you experience this, what you can do is turn off certain effects, so we'll just hide those there. I can now work on the particles, and then once I've finished, I can turn all of those other layers back on. Typically, this does help. You can see it's still struggling because I'm doing a screen recording at the same time, but that's one way to get around it if you experience performance issues. Okay, now I'm going to click the last icon in the bottom left corner. This expands the panel out and gives me options to control the duration. So here you can see me stretching a clip by 400%. This will slow the clip down and make the overall duration longer. So I'm going to do this for all of the effects just to make them all a bit slower. So let's play this from the beginning. As you can see, my computer's still not having any of it. But that's okay for now. Let's collapse this panel down and I'll delete the fonts because I didn't need to import them. I've already installed these to my computer. Next, I'm going to select the type tool, click, and I'm going to type Frostborn. And from the character panel, I'm going to select Gatsby Grunge as the font, increase the size, change a few of the properties, and then align this to the center of the composition. Next, I'm going to duplicate the text layer, drag this down underneath, Type the words press start and then select the other font, Frank. I'm using the bold weight. I'm going to make it a bit smaller and increase the tracking so the letters are spaced further apart. And let's just move this up a little bit. So there we go, that's looking good. And there is one more effect I need to add. So let's just hide everything for a moment. And then I can select my smoke clip and drop this in as well. Let's play this. There we go, very cool. I'm going to use that same technique as before to slow this clip down. But you can see by doing so, it now looks a little bit choppy. And one way we can get around this for all of these slowed down clips is to check this box here for all of them. And you can toggle between frame mix and pixel motion. And more often than not, this will help smooth out these effects. Now the playback does still look choppy here, but when I export this, the slow-mo effect will look much smoother. Now I'm going to take a second to resize this add a layer mask, and also change the hue of the smoke to match the eye, and these techniques are things that we've covered already in this video. There we go, all looking good. Let's turn the two text layers back on. And now I'm going to open up my frost pack that I downloaded and select transition two. This has the frost coming out from the center. So let's drag this above the frostborn text and I'm going to change the track mat for the text layer to luma mat. This means that the text will now be using that frost effect as a layer mask. So you can see it gradually appears in. It's a little bit clipped at the moment, so we will need to fix that. So with the frost layer selected, as with other layers, I can resize and reposition this. Now I can scrub back and forth with the playhead and see how this effect evolves. And again, you can play around with the blending modes. In this example, I went with color dodge. This just blends the white text into the image and gives it a nice blue effect. Now, unfortunately, the frost clip is only a few seconds long and when it runs out, the text disappears. So let's position the playhead at the end of the frost layer, right click the layer, go to time, and select freeze on last frame. 
This will extend this clip out all the way to the end. And because our text layer is using this as a mask, it will now stay visible for the entire duration of the animation. And I did start tinkering with other blending modes for this as well, but in the end, I left the frost layer set to normal. Right, next, let's select the press start layer and then bring the opacity down to 0%. We'll move the playhead out until after the logo has appeared and then click the stopwatch icon for the opacity. This will add a keyframe. We can move the playhead forward and then change the opacity to 100%. This change will generate another keyframe. Again, I'm using Color Dodge as the blending mode and you can see the text now fades in. And I can bring the keyframes closer together if I'd like the fade to be quicker. I can also select and copy that first keyframe, move the playhead forward and paste it in. And now you can see it fades in and fades out. Now that's set up, I can select all three of these keyframes and copy and paste them across the entire timeline. Okay, all good, that's enough of that. Let's go up to Layer, down to New, and select Solid. We'll leave the color set to black and click OK. Make sure this is at the top, and then I'm going to rename this and call it Fade Out. Again, I'm going to keyframe in some changes to the opacity, and I'm going to use this to fade to black at the end of the animation. There we go, so let's give this a play and see how it looks. And remember you can adjust the distance between the keyframes to control the duration of the animation. Right, let's collapse this folder down and select my first sound effect. I can drag this into the composition and you can twizzle this down and for audio, you get the waveform as well. So this can be quite helpful. Now I need to sync this up with the fade out. So let's move that into position. Perfect, first time. Crikey, wasn't expecting that. Okay, so the next sound effect is the formation of the ice. So let's drag this one in as well. Twizzle this down again, and let's give it a play. And exactly the same as opacity, I'm going to keyframe in some changes to the audio levels so that the sound fades out. There we go, that's better. I'm just going to make a few more changes to this. There we go, that's the sound effects all done. And lastly, I'm going to drag in the music track. Right, let's scrub back to the beginning and give it a listen. Oh, lovely. Right, one last thing I'm going to do is go to Layer, New and Adjustment Layer. And from the Effects panel, I'm going to do a search for Lumetri. Drag Lumetri Color onto the Adjustment Layer, making sure the Adjustment Layer is at the top, and you get access to a huge variety of different settings that enable you to control the color of your image. You can use LUTs, you can use color profiles, you can do all sorts of cool stuff with this effect. Now to preview your animation, you can scrub back to the beginning and press play. The green bar represents what's been rendered. I've sped this up because it took ages for me, but let's speed it up even more and just get that over with. And then once it's fully rendered, I can scrub back to the beginning and get a nice smooth playback. So once your animation's done, you can go to file, down to export, you can add this to the render queue in After Effects, or you can export using Adobe Media Encoder. So there we go, those are the steps. And if you spend a bit longer on it, you can get something that looks like this.
So if you enjoyed this video, remember you could subscribe for more, ring the bell for notifications, and I'll see you next time.